Hi guys, Sam here from Cottabrook Koi Farm. I'm here today to show you how to use the HANA low range nitrite test kit. This is certainly one of the more confusing of the HANA pocket testers as it doesn't give you a result straight out of the meter. You've got to do a few calculations and a lot of people get confused by that. So fingers crossed, this nice and simple video will help you understand how to use the pocket checker, how to use the calculations and what those numbers actually mean for you and your fish. Stay tuned, hope this is a nice and simple easy guide of how to use this fantastic little bit of kit. Let's take a look, see what comes inside the box. First of all, it comes in a really useful plastic hard case. When you're dealing with things like glass, loose reagents, really useful to have something like this to store them inside. It comes with six reagents, which means you've got enough to do six tests straight out of the box. You can buy refills, which I believe are either 20 or 25 per pack. It comes with two glass cuvettes. So these are used when taking the reading through the pocket checker, two of them, and you've got your pocket test kit. And also really useful, it comes with a battery as well. And the top, you've got your manual, how to take a reading. So if you follow this step by step, it's gonna tell you absolutely everything I do in this video. However, this can get a little bit confusing, hence why we're here today. First of all, we need to put the battery inside the reader. This is done by a small Phillips screwdriver on the bottom of the meter. Once you place your battery inside of the pocket checker, you can turn it on. This can be done by simply pressing the button once on the front of the meter, you should get displaying C.1. At this point, we need to calibrate the reader. Now we're going to fill the gas cuvette with some water from the tank behind us. We want to fill the water all the way up to the top of the white line, which says 10 mil on top of it. Once you've done this, you can screw the cap on top of the glass, and then with a cloth, you need to dry this down to make sure there's no excess water outside which is going to affect the light reading. So now we need to calibrate the meter before we can add any of the reagent solution. To do this, open the top of the pocket checker, place that inside, and press the button on the front just once. This will flash for a few moments. All it does is it's taking a light reading from inside the pocket checker, so after you add the reagent, it's going to measure the difference in the color of the water. So once it's displaying C2, calibration has taken place, you can take this back outside of the meter and we'll get one of our reagents and we'll place this inside. These can be slightly awkward to do. The best way I find is to sort of knock all the powder into one corner. Tear this open. Very carefully pour the powder inside. You see a white powder has appeared in the bottom of our cuvette. Just going to make sure I've got everything out, give it another bit of a shake. Once you're confident you've got everything out, you can put the lid back on. Now we need to very gently invert So we're not shaking it, we're just inverting the glass. This helps the powder mix in. Once the powder is starting to disappear, we're nearly there. So this next point is when a lot of people get very confused and end up doing something wrong. This time we need to press and hold the button on the front till a number is displayed. Now we have 15, it's just got straight away gone to 14. This is because this is a timer which is built into the reader, which is counting down from 15 minutes. So what this will do will go 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Once you get to 10, you'll actually show the seconds displayed on the front as it counts down. But because it doesn't show this straight away, this catches a lot of people out and they think their reading is 0.14. This is not correct. This is a 14 minute still left on the timer. So once all the powder is all disappeared, you can place it back inside the reader. Make sure you shut the lid nicely. And now this can just sit there and it can count down now our reading has dropped below 10 minutes, you'll see the second counter coming down on the reader. This is when it's a bit more self-explanatory what it's doing. So don't forget, if it says 0.14, this isn't a 0.14 reading, this is a 14 minute timer ticking down. We'll go 14, 13, 12, 10, and then you'll get to this moment where it says 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, working it all the way down to zero. Once it hits zero, this is when you'll get your reading come through.
The reader has now finished counting down and given us a reading of 29. So first of all, let's grab ourselves a calculator. So 29, as per the instructions which come with the checker, we need to multiply this reading by 3.29, as you can see written just down here. So 29 times 3.29 gives us a number of 95. But as you can see on top of the reader, this is parts per billion. And most of the time, koi keepers or any aquarist, anyone dealing with water quality, most of the time works in parts per million. So that gives us a nice high number of 95. Let's divide this by 1,000 to convert it into parts per million. This gives us a number of 0.09. So 29 on the checker, 0.09 parts per million. And what you can see, if we open up the reader, you can see it's turned a very slight pink color. Only slightly because we've got a nice low reading. But if you put them side by side, you might see a slight color difference in the two. I mean, it's very marginal. Slightly pink, completely clear. And what this pocket checker has done is essentially taken a light reading and it's worked out the difference between this shade of pink and this clear color here.